What is up, people? Welcome back. Now, I know you saw the title and you're wondering, wait, didn't I already learn to multiply in like third grade? Well, hopefully you did because in this lesson, we multiply. And be sure to multiply your like button smashes for me, please and thank you. All right, so I'm gonna start this lesson a little bit differently by jumping right to the punchline with no setup. When a person or business or government spends an amount of money, it causes a chain reaction that leads to a larger increase in total GDP than the amount they initially spent. This is the multiplier effect. Let's start simple. Imagine that Joey spends $100 buying sandwiches from Rachel. GDP rises by $100. But now Rachel has $100 that she didn't have before, and now she can go shopping at Bloomingdale's. And that adds to GDP also. That's the basic idea. So far, so good? How you doing? Um, fine, thanks, I guess. But what we really want to know is how much will GDP increase by as a result of a change in autonomous spending? Autonomous spending is just a term that we will hardly ever use that refers to the initial change in aggregate spending. Think of it as like the first domino that starts the whole multiplier effect. I have to warn you, I'm going to give you some very specific vocabulary in the next couple of minutes and all of it's important because one term or calculation leads to the next. So feel free to slow down and replay things if you start to get lost. Okay, let's start with disposable income. In econ, this term has a very specific definition and it refers to the money that a person can spend. Disposable income equals income plus transfers minus taxes. You'll recall that transfers refer to money that a government provides to some citizens like social security or welfare benefits so we add that to the money a person earns, and then we subtract the taxes they pay, and what we're left with is what the person can actually spend. This is our starting point because we're interested in understanding how a change in disposable income will affect a person's consumption and savings. After all, the only two things we can do with our disposable income is to spend it or to save it. A person's marginal propensity to consume, aka their MPC, represents the increase in consumption that results from an increase in disposable income. In other words, if your disposable income increases, how much will your consumption increase? The marginal propensity to save, or MPS on the other hand, yep, you guessed it, shows the increase in savings that result from an increase in disposable income. For example, imagine that Chandler's disposable income increases by $1,000, and as a result, his consumption increases by $900, and his savings increase by $100. To calculate his MPC, we take the change in consumption and divide it by the change in disposable income. So $900 over $1,000 equals 0 0.9. Similarly, for MPS, take the change in savings and divide that by the change in disposable income. So $100 divided by $1,000 equals 0 0.1. And I'm sure you might have already noticed, but MPC plus MPS equal one since that represents 100% of the change in disposable income. Now that we know Chandler's MPC, we can say that Chandler will spend 90% and save 10% of every additional dollar of disposable income he receives. But this is macro, so why are we focusing so much on one person's spending habit? And that's a good question, and the answer is that we're gonna use this same concept and just apply it to everybody. So if we say that an economy has an MPC of 0.9, we're assuming that everybody in the economy will spend 90% of every additional dollar of disposable income. And remember what we're interested in. We want to know how much aggregate spending or GDP is going to increase by following an initial change in spending. So let's go back to our example with Chandler. Let's assume that the federal government contracted with Chandler to do some accounting or data collection or what is it that Chandler does anyway? What is Chandler Bing's job? Trans funding. Oh, 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 he's a trans funds, Sure, let's go with that. So far, GDP has increased by $1,000. Okay, so Chandler gets his $1,000, and we're assuming an economy-wide MPC of 0 0.9. So he spends $900 to buy Monica a very small engagement ring from Phoebe, and GDP has now increased by $1,900. Now, Phoebe's disposable income increased by $900 which means she'll spend $810 buying a bunch of Pottery Barn stuff from Ross, the person, not the store. GDP is up by $2,710 now. Okay, so Ross's disposable income has increased by $810, and he'll spend 90% of that, which is obviously $729, 
and on and on and on. Again, we've established that there is this chain reaction from an initial change in autonomous spending that leads to an increase in GDP of a greater amount than the initial amount of spending. Now, happily, there's an easier way for us to figure out the maximum total change in GDP that will result, and that is to use the multiplier. The expenditure multiplier equals one over MPS, or said another way, the multiplier is the reciprocal of the MPS. In our example, the MPS is 0.1, so one divided by 0.1 equals 10. My suggestion is to think of the MPS as a fraction because finding the reciprocal of a fraction is very easy. So think of it as one over 1 tenth, which equals 10. If the MPS was 0.2, one over 1 fifth equals five, or if the MPS was 0.25, one over 1 fourth equals four, and so on. Now, to use the multiplier, just take the initial increase in spending and, well, multiply it by the multiplier. And this will give you the maximum total increase in GDP. In our example, $1,000 times 10 equals $10,000. To illustrate how important the size of the multiplier and in turn the MPC is, imagine that instead of 0.9, the MPC was only 0.5. That means the MPS is also 0.5 and the multiplier is one over one half, so two. The government spends the same thousand dollars buying data services from Chandler, but this time the total maximum increase in GDP is only $2,000. This illustrates that the expenditures multiplier quantifies the size of the change in aggregate demand that results from a change in one of the components of aggregate demand. And lastly, there's another multiplier, and it's called the tax multiplier, which functions basically the same way and shows the size of the change in aggregate demand that results from a change in taxes. Tax cuts increase GDP because it increases a person's disposal income and in turn their consumption, while tax increases reduce GDP because people have less disposal income and as a result, their consumption falls. The tax multiplier equals MPC over MPS. So if we alter our original scenario just a little bit and say that instead of government buying data services from Chandler, the government reduces Chandler's taxes by $1,000, we'll see a similar chain reaction. But the important thing to notice is that the initial dollar amount of the tax cut does not add to GDP because nothing was spent. Rather, the government just let Chandler keep more of his own money. Now, when Chandler does spend the additional $900, now we start to see the increase in GDP and the rest of our chain plays out like it did before. Because of this, the tax multiplier will always be smaller than the expenditure multiplier. Again, this is because the initial change in spending contributes directly to GDP, while the initial change in taxes contributes only indirectly to GDP. Back to the math, 0.9 divided by 0.1 equals 9, meaning that the total increase in GDP from a $1,000 tax cut will be $9,000. And in case you're wondering, if you have a question involving government transfers, use the tax multiplier for the same reason. The transfer doesn't directly add to GDP since nothing's being bought or sold. So it's only indirectly once the recipient spends the money that they've received. All right, well, that's it for this one. Stick around and do the practice that's coming up on the screen. As always, great job. Until next time, this has been a La Money production. Thanks again for watching. Please hit that like button and be sure to subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. Check out the description to get the link to the answers to these questions, as well as the notes and great study aids like AP Macro in 250 words, and I will see you in the next video.